Okay guys, welcome to another uh, issue of, not an issue, another video of uh, Computing Video Games magazines. This is where I take a look at a magazine. I just look at it, read it and talk about it whilst I'm reading it. Now this one, Mean Machines. Mean Machines first came out in October 1990, if Wikipedia is not telling lies. I'll always look upon Mean Machines as being the sort of the the watershed moment where this industry of ours grew up, you know, before Mean Machines, the consoles and that kind of stuff, it was all 8-bit machines and they were still regarded as sort of like things that geeks did. You know, it wasn't mainstream, but then with the advent of the consoles coming along, the Mega Drive, the SNES, etc., that's when this industry grew up and that's when people started to realise there was money to be made. So this one here, this is issue number 5, so I'm assuming it would be um, February 1991. What have we got in the front here? Final Fight, Dick Tracy, I think that's a crap game. Speedball, Amazing Free Stickers, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Amstrad, Nintendo, etc, etc. So let's take a look and see what it's like. Right inside, what have we got? Page 2 and 3, we have Special Reserve. <laughs> um, <coughs> Who was I talking to? Yeah, it was uh, my mate Mike, um, 20th Century Game, and he was talking about um, when he uh, he joined one of these uh, companies, and what they would do is they would send you a game, a new game every month, and you had, I think you had like seven days to return it. it was, there was like book clubs and video clubs that were along the same lines, and basically, you, you know, they would automatically send you what they said was the best game. And uh, you had to return it. If you didn't return it within the seven days or, or whatever it was, you had to pay for it. And uh, yeah, apparently Mike used to forget to return them and he ended up with some really god awful games. But yeah, Special Reserve. I was always intrigued about this one. It always looked really nice. I think uh, Dave Perry, ex Games Master, I think he was involved in this. But yeah, you can see here, it just it, it just jumped out of you. It really can kind of, it made, as a kid, looking at this, I mean, I wasn't a child, I would be about 19, 20, so I wasn't, I was an adult at that point, but even for an adult <laughs> of 20 years old, it just looked amazing, it really did. So what have we got here, Special Reserve, you get the, for your price club benefits, you get the Energy Magazine, oh, so I'll get the cursor for where I'm reading up here, news reviews, graphics, screenshots, pack shots, charts, latest giga savers. Game reviews in every issue, Night City, Cybertoon, and the Killer Die Adventures with Cyberpunk, blah 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 blah. So your annual, that was alright, annual UK membership was £6. There we go, Nintendo Game Boy, 69.99. Free Shockwave holsters and bail. I actually got a, a Game Boy on release. The Mega Drive. What's interesting about this, was this a wireless uh, joypad? I know you could get wireless joypads, they're quite expensive, but they're certainly no cables. Maybe they just used a bit of, uh, well, I was going to say Photoshop, that wasn't a thing back in uh, 1990. Yeah, price-wise, I mean, look, pe people complain about the price of games now, you know, they say £50 is ridiculous, 30 quid is ridiculous, whatever, or they even moan about games at nine, uh, 99 pence. On the Mega Drive, here's Forgotten Worlds, 30 quid. Now, 30 quid back in 1990, believe you me, was a hell of a lot more money than 50 quid is now. There's the good old Atari Lynx. Yeah, special reserve with Harlow. Oh, that's down in Essex, isn't it? Yeah, so £6 off your £6 and you get to join that. So, Mean Machines. Um, that, <coughs> from what I remember, it was uh, one of the sort of the founder uh, writers or editors for this magazine was Julian Rignall, ex Zap Bigwig. Um, he was writing his consoles, and it just you know the, the presentation behind this. You know you need to remember 1990. I mean I had an Amiga at that point, but still lots of people still had 8-bit machines. People were still playing Spectrums, and on the the the, the shelves of your favourite, uh, you know. John Menzies, whatever it was, you had this magazine with all these glorious looking visuals. You know, looking at this now, yeah, you're thinking what was the big deal, but seeing games that had graphics that looked like this were just incredible, really were really a gauntlet too. 
So what we're reviewing this one, games reviewed and into Gremlins 2, Rescue, Ghostbusters 2, so not a, not a great, great uh, lineup I have to say. Sword of Soda, I know, was that in the Mega Drive? Yeah, so, okay, there's Mr. Rignall there, still sporting a rather fine uh, mullet. Julian Armani Rignall, never willing to be in one place for long, apparently the style police are after him for wearing loud rugby shirts without a licence. Jazz has recently been zooming around the Brands Hatch circuit in XR2s and Formula First racing cars. His favourite games at the moment are Mario 4, John Madden and Power Racer. Editor Julian Rignall, uh, art editor Osmond Brown, don't remember him. Gary Harrod, yeah I think I remember him, he was a sort of ex-sappy type person I think. Yeah, what's this? When most people think of console games, they tend to think of cute platform type games. This might have been true up until a year ago. Just check out Nintendo and see has a vast range of Mario, Alex, Kid type and other cute games. However, a new wave of console games are now beginning to emerge, which are far more complex and challenging and help put paid to many a computer owner's boast that console games are all simple. John Madden's football. Gary Harrod. Yeah, I think I remember him. He's got a... The nineties was not a good fashion time. I, I, you know, I just have to look at my pictures of myself. It was not good at all. So the ratings. How did the ratings work? Here at Mean Machines, we are committed to giving you the most in-depth console reviews possible. Here's how they work: game difficulty, lives continues, skill levels, responsiveness, presentation, graphics, sound, playability, lastability, overall, and players. And you've got little icons, these nifty icons, show you what sort of game it is. Here's the full list, shoot 'em up, beat 'em up, arcade conversion, sports game, platform game, da ba da ba da simulation. Yes, okay, Commodore Amiga or Sega Mega Drive Plus, what is this? Oh, this is a March competition. Has this been run by? Oh, Alright, it's one of these uh, scam things, they probably charge you 50 pence a minute. Oh, there you go, 44 pence a minute. What is a hard drive? A driving simulator? A device for storing large amounts of data or a concrete path leading up to a house? What about a rather uh, rubbish game in arcades by Atari? It's, what amazes me about these games or these competitions, they were probably making an absolute fortune and they were giving away an Atari or a Game Boy. I mean a Game Boy was like 70 quid, they're giving away a prize at 70 quid. And I mean, all they needed was 70 people to phone, or 140 people to phone, and they'd cleared their, they'd cleared it. So that was a bit of a con. But did anybody ever win anything in these? I certainly never bothered. I never went in for them because I always thought I'd never win anyway. Right, Strike Eagle. Now remember, having this on the Commodore 64, it was actually quite a nice game. The apologies about the sort of rather blurriness of this video. This. The PDF I've got for these isn't the most uh, sharpest, so what you're seeing is what it's actually like. I noticed the last couple of videos that I'd done with these, I hadn't rendered it at the proper resolution, so it was slightly blurred looking. One of the better Amiga games to appear last year was Turrican, a huge arcade adventure which you guide a laser packing cyborg around a massive, and we mean massive, multi directionally scrolling map. I actually started playing this on the Mega Drive um, fairly recently, it's a really nice game. From the USA, Cheertastic, if you're a fan of those coin ops that you climb into and get thrown around while you play, you might well be interested to in these two items that were featured recently at the CS show in Las Vegas. They're both seats which which tilt you and moves you around. Funny, you know, these I've never seen any of these things actually come to fruition. I mean we all know about the uh, the, the the system that never was the uh, Quinix system. You know, it came with its own built in chair and that kind of stuff, but I don't think there was ever any of these chairs actually came to anything. Probably just too damned expensive to begin with. Rule the Universe. What is this? Star Control. Ah, that's a kind of strategy game, I think it is. Baseball. What was that? Terminator 2, one of the forthcoming films of this year was that Mean Machines mob was waiting for being the Terminator 2. Yeah. I still remember, that's to me, that is one of the last big blockbuster films I remember. 
back in the 90s, going to the cinema was, it was an experience, it was so exciting. The cinema, I actually went through a phase, I think sort of the 80s when videotapes started coming out, the, vid, the, the cinema kind of almost died a death. People weren't going to the cinema, people were just watching videotapes or hiring them from video shops. But then in the 90s, it became a rejuvenated industry and there was big money getting spent and I mean Terminator 2 Judgment Day, that was, you know, it was almost like akin <laughs> getting tickets for a, a concert. You would tell people, I've got tickets to go and see Terminator 2 tomorrow night. You know, it was an amazing experience because the cinemas had gone from these little dirty, little single screen affairs that we all knew and loved back in the 80s and they became these huge big screens with amazing sound and that kind of stuff. Um, obviously it's even more now but yeah the 90s was a great time for the cinema some epic epic films and that was one of them Bart Simpson yeah the Simpsons kind of came to prominence in the 90s I was never really a fan even now I'm not a big fan of the Simpsons pricks at the sound of sound sorry at the speed of sound I beg your pardon I thought we were talking about some little joyrider yes Sonic the Hedgehog you know what I remember I can still remember reading about Sonic the Hedgehog getting released and going to see it and it was just like this was a next this was the next level. It was just amazing, you know. Going from a, a computer and seeing these games, it just looked incredible. Bloody hell. One of those strange time saving widgets that the console industry throws up every now and then is a Mega Play, a device that lets you have up to ten games plugged into the Mega Drive simultaneously. So you can select one at a time. <laughs> I'll need to get myself one of these. We now have Everdrives. Can imagine if an Everdrive was available back in 1990. Ah, pool now. I my mate had that actually. Side pocket. It wasn't the greatest game. It wasn't the greatest, but mega play. I wonder if that's even still a thing. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. He's cool. He's tough. Blah blah blah. Oh, right, okay, is this. Ah, right, that's an advert, right, for Sega. Yeah, Sega had some great adverts. To take this, to, sorry, was it to be, to be this good takes ages, which was the Sega backwards. Castle of Illusion, that's again, that was a kind of children's uh, game, but it had some amazing visuals. And if I remember really, it got a really, really good review. 34.99, what did it get? Graphics 97%, yeah. Easily the best platform game in the Mega Drive. Mickey Mouse represents fun, fun, fun to the nth degree. Never really played it, I must admit. It's on one, another one of these games that I keep thinking I should really make a point. Right, Letter Zone. Always like reading some of these things. See if I can recognise anybody. It doesn't actually have any. Usually you would have the guy's name. Well, that one guy's got, he's got his name after that one. The, the problem with all of these magazines, it was all quite kind of... Although these machines were kind of aimed at people with money, they were always quite childish. I think your mag is brill. You know what you're talking about, and this is why I'll always buy it. When you said your dad would absolutely love it when Arnold Palmer's golf game came out, blah, yeah, can't even be arsed reading that. I'm a confused Nintendo owner and would like to ask you a question. Why is it in every magazine... Once magazine you put a Sega cartridge icon on a Nintendo review. Do the initials after your name stand for mentally retarded? <laughs> Dare me, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> Dare me, yes. You wouldn't get a stupid comment like that nowadays. Yeah. Fortunately. Yes. Um, right, dear Jazz, I'm getting a Game Boy for Christmas, so by the time you read this, hopefully I'll already have it. I was wondering if the official Game Boy is compatible with software from Japan and America. Yeah. So what was this? Questions and answers. There's Jazz Rignal. Raven Games London, Famicom, PC Engine, Nintendo Game Boy. I don't think the Super Nintendo was out at this point, was it? Because it doesn't feature in this. I can't remember when it came out. I know that the Mega Drive certainly came out before the, the SNES. Tips Godzilla. Yeah, there's all these weird things. You press a 
different keys and that kind of stuff. Gargoyles Quest, I had that, I, no I didn't actually have it, a friend had it on the, the Game Boy. Kinda an unofficial sequel to uh, Ghost and Goblins. Shadow Dancer, that is a great game, really good in the Mega Drive. Super Monaco GP, another good game, it's not fared that well, you know, looking at it now. But you can see here, most of the, the pictures were in colour. And that's what really set it out from like, you know, the Zap 64 and Crash was a really nice colour. Yeah, and you always had these really, really dedicated people who would draw maps. Oh, so got far too much time in their hands. Says he making video games about old making videos about old games. <laughs> Famicom tips. Oh wait a minute. Street Fighter, so this must be... Alright, so it was the Super Famicom, right, they're just referring to it as Famicom, right, got you. Final Fight, yeah, when Final Fight appeared, it just... It was like, wow, this is the arcade. Tips helpline stuck in Mario. It was a I liked, I liked the magazine, just to see what I was missing, so it was like a double-edged sword. It was quite depressing because there'd be all these wonderful consoles and I couldn't afford them, you know. <laughs> Speedball, this is on the Mega Drive, yeah, I think it was, yep. It's a game, you know what, Speedball is a game I've never really got. I love sports games, I used to like football games, I just never ever got to grips with, with Speedball. Never really played it much. I think it's definitely a, a multiplayer type thing. TV games, a Sega shop. If Sega make it for the UK, then we sell it. Yeah, there's always this bollocks gunfighter. Use your voice to outdraw the gunfighter. Cash prizes. Yeah, so there was. Yeah, but another win a game, uh, win a Game Boy or something. Game Tech consoles, cartridges, 16-bit software. Hire club for games. See, that wasn't a bad way to actually do it. That writing's just a bit too wee. Gremlins, a new batch. What was this one? Was this the NES? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a big fan of games like that. I always thought they were a bit kind of childish. Because I was an adult when I got this, I always looked upon kind of games like that as great for kids. PC Engine. I mean, let's see if we can I mean, there's, you know, out on 33 quid on the PC Engine. So, you know, people call it. Eh, well, I'm look, so I'm looking at the air it says call. People complain about the price of games now, but looking back, you know, people were paying way, way more. Cyber Police eSWAT. What is this one? This is a Mega Drive. Don't remember this one. Don't think I've ever actually played this. Kind of looks similar to Contra meets sort of Robocop. Okay. 87%, not a very close coin up conversion. Ah, right, okay, so it was actually a conversion. After the disappointing Master System version of eSwatch, it's nice to see that the Mega Drive game is a whole lot more playable with classy audio visuals to match. It's also quite difficult with even the easy level being a great challenge to complete. The super extra weapon is simply the icing on the cake. Highly recommended to all blasting addicts. Uh, I mean, there's Nintendo, you know, 38.99. There must be some, uh, there must be some import adverts that we can look at, and that will really show you just what people were actually paying. So there we go. Um, a Mega Drive was 130 quid. Super Famicom was 250 quid. Well, that was a, that was you could get, you could almost get two Mega Drives for the price price of a. a SNES. PC Engine handheld. You pay more for that now. 259 quid PC Engine, 135 quid. Mm, that's slightly more expensive than you would get for it now. Mean Machines, yeah, all these stupid adverts. It was just screaming out to young kids, probably boys, you know what I mean? <laughs> They'd want their mummy. Let them phone up and rack up the phone bill. John Madden's football. Never really got into that again. CES White Hart Lane in London, next to Tottenham Hotspur. 
Ah, Tony Takusi. He was he's a bit of a legendary a legendary figure in this uh, this that there industry. So you could phone up Tony and he'd give you console tips. Speedball subscribe. You'll be the first to get mean machines, each issue will be priority mailed to you, so you'll get it even before it goes on sale. How much was it? The price of a subscription is only twenty quid, nineteen twenty five if you live in the UK. Very good, so what, the charts, we had Golden Axe, this is for the Mega Drive, Golden Axe, Revenge of Shinobi, that's a great game, Populous, John Madden's Football, Forgotten Worlds, World Cup Italia 90, Budokan, don't remember that one, Goose, Goals and Ghosts, that's a great game, Arnold Palmer Golf, Super Monaco GP, Nintendo, Mutant Turtles, Double Dragon, yeah, what about the SNES? Ah, so they don't actually have the SNES in this. Master System Golden Axe as well. Ghostbusters 2. Mm, I remember seeing that on Amiga thinking it was a lot of pants. What's uh, Jazz saying about it? Oh, that's Matt. Let's have a look at Jazz. I didn't think that this was all that bad as games go. It's pretty challenging and is enjoyable in a frustrating sort of way. There are lots of horrible surprises to catch out unsuspecting player. 57%. Potentially good game ruined by awful graphics and sound. <laughs> not what you would expect. Oh, is that the NES? Yeah, not what you'd expect on a, a console. Dr. Mario again, this is on the NES once more. I think I played that on the Game Boy. It's actually not a bad little game. Nowadays we're absolutely snowed under with these kind of games, 88%. Dick Tracy, oh dear, I'm just going to skip right past that because we know it will be absolute pish. Hmm, 77%. Go figure. There you go. Tele games. That's quite a... I'm sure they made games. I'm, su I'm sure they were selling games up to maybe a few years ago. Preston games, ah, you could swap games. To swap Solar Striker for tennis, five pounds. <laughs> Can you imagine that nowadays? Well, I suppose you do technically get that, but with the ability to trade in. Crackdown. What was that on Mega Drive? Oh, it's kind of an overhead view, is it? it? Looks like it. The Sega coin op from which this is converted is a very interesting piece of arcade hardware, not featuring the Spike expansion system of previous. Mm. Don't think I've ever actually played that. I enjoyed playing this great arcade conversion. It features a tense and exciting atmosphere as you sneak around the levels, planting bombs and avoiding baddies. 84%. Yes. You can see here the magazine is just full of adverts. More so than even uh, the 8 bit magazines, I reckon. So this was on the NES again. What was this? Rescue. Storming embassies is a tricky task. A terrorist keeps shooting at you. Guy ropes can snap and balaclavas have a habit of riding up and down. So riding up and getting into your eyes. Yeah, I wasn't. I never had any connection to NES, so most of the games other than the really, really popular ones like Mario, I wasn't aware of at all. What's this? The Sega Mega Drive? Or is this the Master System? I think it is. Cyber Shinobi. Ninja beat em ups can be great, Revenge of Shinobi proved that. I had high hopes for this game with its blend of magic and technology, but yet again I've been disappointed. The hero's movement is wooden, unresponsive and jerky, destroying any sense of unsuspended disbelief. What did it get? A paltry 58%. The Japanese to English, sorry, English to Japanese games converter. Normally sold at £20 or more. For one month only, how much is it then? I don't see a price. Oh, offer price only $14.99. Let's have a look. Uh, is there any. Is there any. Uh, import games? Yeah, I mean, there, look. There you are. There's import games there. F0, £45. We're talking 1990. We're talking 90. 2000, 2000. We're talking 27 years ago. And games. Import games were 45 quid. You know, that's what I paid. I paid less than that for Mario Odyssey and the Switch. So, 
you know, next time you start complaining about the price of games, just think what we used to pay. I know that won't wash with kids, but people our age, we should know better. Bad Dudes, that was on the NES again, it's a, yeah, it's a quite an iffy arcade game, nice graphics, but nothing to write home about. Sword of Sodan, I wasn't aware that was on the Mega Drive, that was one of the first jaw-dropping games that I got on the Amiga, and if I remember rightly, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, brilliant graphics let down by very monotonous game concept. It looked amazing, but it was just, it was extremely shallow. Walk from left to right and just keep pressing the fire button. But it looked amazing. That one looks pretty good as well. A really nice sound as well. Game Boy Roundup Dr. Mario. And that was one we were just looking at. Beauty Fighter. I kind of remember that one. Monster Truck. I'm sure that was maybe quite good. 65%. Hmm. Matt doesn't like it. This is a dire sad excuse for a game. Discount consoles. Next one, Skill Fabin Brill on sale March the 1st for only £1.75. Last month our man Jazz brought you a report on the machine that will take the gaming world by storm. Ah, there you go, Nintendo Super Famicom. Now he's got a hold of the first games to appear on this marvellous machine and reckons they're incredible. Check them out and see what you think. So yeah, there you go, this is even before it was released. Yeah, you know, <laughs> when you had a Commodore 64 and you were looking at games like this, you look at it, that just looks, wow, unbelievable. It just looks incredible. I mean, that's why I, I would have sold my mother to buy one, but, you know, Final Fight as well, just looks, as far as I was concerned, and most people were concerned, you were getting an arcade, an arcade game, and look at that Gradius, just absolutely stonking looking. Yeah, there you go, Pilot Wings. I remember seeing that in Games Master thinking it just looked amazing. Gauntlet 2 as well. Uh, Gauntlet, what's this? Here's a show stopping arcade conversion. What is this on the. Gauntlet is one of the most faithful recreations I've quite not yet seen in Nintendo. Is this on the NES, possibly? Doesn't actually. Is that the NES? I think it is actually. Hmm. It does look very nice. See you, Amiga. Oh, that was another magazine I used to get quite a lot. I'll no doubt do one of these on that at some point. More and more and more. I can't actually remember there being quite so many adverts. Populous preview. I always thought, I mean, I, I enjoyed that in Amiga. I always thought the, the computer was better for that, you know, for obvious reasons with the mouse control and that kind of stuff. Jobs and gossip. Betty Boo. She did the soundtrack to Big Pockets on the Commodore Amiga. And finally we've got an advert for computer and video games, Final Fight, Super Monaco GP. You tend to find that most of the adverts had the same uh, same game reviews. They were always trying to get a sort of a one upmanship and get the first exclusive review and what tended to happen was they would end up doing a preview and almost selling it like a review, which was a bit cheeky. Because then um, when the final game turned up, it wasn't always what you thought it was. And that is it, win this amazing Outrun arcade machine. The ultimate arcade game worth £2,000. Hmm, probably get one cheaper than that now I would think. But again, look at that, you're paying... <laughs> 33 pence a minute, cheap rate, average call length is 5 minutes, so you're talking about you're paying almost, what, 4 quid. You're thinking, oh I'm getting an amazing game, but... They must have absolutely coined it in. So anyway guys, that is Mean Machines, a wonderful magazine of its time. It doesn't look quite as impressive some 20 odd years later, um, but it just showed us that the industry was growing up and it showed us, a, a sort of, it gave us an insight into what, you know, how this industry was growing with amazing looking machines and that kind of stuff. So, as usual guys, thank you very, very much for watching.